I'm going to call his name. I bet one missing. Now, where is Um Okay, yeah, okay, I'll see you right now. I'm not making a guy's name. Uh, you, you know a guy by the name of Hugh McKenna, McGinnis? You know him? You know him? Was he mean in college, too? <laughs> well, he was the meanest coach I've ever been around. But anyway, so he's kind of the designated get rid of the guy you don't want to kind of guy. Okay? And, uh, there will be a practice to start. Uh, he had this group practicing. He had a lot of chasing cows to run to the free team. Now was one of those guys. And they, had, they had five teams. One of the people five that group called the others. And I was on the others. And everybody on the other team, they, they had one name. They called him Hemmons. Okay? So they wanted to get in the game. Hey, Hemmons, you know, come over here and you know, get in here and do this and stuff like that. So we having this experiment one day. We had these tackles. We called them tack and tweed. They were 300 pounds a piece. And they were, they, when they bring smoke back then, you know, like, you had a steak bar too, right? <laughs> you have no bar at all? Okay, you got another bar. You know, they had the steak bar across your face, and I'm getting beat in the face, and it, it was brutal. I'm bleeding and stuff. My hand was bleeding, they were hitting me so hard. But, um, so I decided to go down and cut the guy. And we had this high school coach, you know, if you were getting beat up, it was a big guy, when you do like this, you drop one shoulder, drop the other one, and cut it. And that's what, that's how we, I was taught that. And I did, but the objective was not to cut the guy, the objective was to run me off. And um, so after a few plays, um, I cut the guy again, and he told me, he said, uh, hey, what you do? You go in and you pull off my stuff. And I'm going, and I'm crying, and everything else, you know. And uh, I got to walk through the defensive club, and we had this guy by the name of Hoover Wright, who was the uh, secondary coach, and he said, come on, son, you play for me on that side. And he put me on that side of the ball, that middle linebacker. They start scrimmage back up, and they were really, really violent for about 15 minutes. And uh, they found out I was the most violent thing there, and they started, they took a different approach. So on the day that I was being cut, was the day that I made the club. And in my heart, now I know that you can never tell a person what he's not, because he will prove you wrong every time. And so by saying that, you know, you look at kids, and I made the mistake when I was a coach, and especially in high school, uh, trying to get a team together, I, I, I read right now some kids overlook. And that's probably the worst thing about my career because some of the kids that could play that didn't come forward and let me know what was on their mind, I didn't play that. And it bothers me to this day. And uh, so, you know, those mistakes I don't have to forgive myself for it. I just work harder when I run across the next kid to make sure I don't do it at the end and make things better. But my career, after that, you know, I ended up, um, got drafted in the time out of Houston Oilers, and I thought I should have been drafted in the first round, and uh, they went through the first nine rounds, the first two days, and I called and said, listen, I'm not going, I'm not going to play for you guys. I'm going somewhere else. They had nowhere else to go. But, uh, <laughs> so they got to the next round, and when I signed, I got a $14,000 bonus, I mean, full bonus. Got a $14,000 contract, got a $6,000 bonus, and a brand new dog collab. And I held it up. I was ready to quit. That's all I ever wanted. I wanted a car, money, and whatever. <laughs> 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 they want to play. And um, I remember uh, Zeke Moore and I, another cornerback friend of mine, uh, we had, he had a uh, $9,000 uh, bonus check. And we go to the bank downtown Houston to cash. <clears throat> And the lady said, how do you want it? I said, five, ten, and one. I came out the bank, had all this money stuck in my pocket, and Zeke had all this money stuck. We were back there trying to protect each other. And um, it was almost a done deal now, you know. And um, But that was the start of a career that, you know, I, I wanted to quit every year uh, after that. And I played simply because uh, I didn't have anything else to do. But I always wanted to be a teacher. Okay, and in the process of teaching, my wife was an optical engineer at NASA, and we didn't see each other because she worked all the time I did too. And so she said that she was going to quit her job so she could follow me around for that one year. She did, and she followed me around for 14. And uh, she was back in education, and afterwards I went back to education. And that's what I do today because that's my first love. And um, at this point, it seemed like someone else was playing that sport other than myself because I'm not the guy. So everything he said here didn't have anything to do with me. It was God's will. It was God's will. And that's how I play life. I spend every day not trying to take somebody else. That's trying to, trying to get myself ready. And I am a full-time job. The hardest thing in the world for me to do is just, just do right. 
I, it'd be on my mind to do right. And before I get in the car, just boom, you know, just all these things. And I'm thinking, you know, life got to be more than this. But I just can't quite figure it out. But I'm trying. And um, so, you know, being, try, doing, trying, and getting an opportunity to meet people has really been a plus for me, especially kids. And I'm going to say this, some of the right person ever. The kids I work with, I work in a hospital homebound program. So if your son would come to Houston and be in any of our hospitals, I would be his guy in the council. So we do the hospital, we do the homebound, and we have agencies where kids are placed by the state, which means the day they're 18, they're out. And they belong to us. They belong to the world. And um, it's very rewarding, but also very hard to And it's more than one school. So there's a lot of kids out there that need to help. And um, so I suggest that you have an opportunity. And I know you do. You know, um, I think the biggest make the, the biggest mistake that I made, I wanted them to be like me. Instead of understanding who they are. And let's walk this journey together. So once I decided to do that, I really started to fix that. And so um, the rest of you get back to my kids. I'm telling them, you know, guys, when I get told you right, I'm going to wipe you out. But that means I won't touch you once, because I'm not going to get told you right. I'm just a full-time project. We happen to be a football player. We happen to be around great people. 